Fantastic. Moving on to our next question, and this one we will start with Peng Laoshi. And this question is, how do you help students learn characters? You know, if I think about learning I, really any uh, logographic language, there is a challenge to that, as most of our students are more comfortable with the Roman alphabet, and now we're giving them an entirely new writing and reading system. So how do you help overcome those challenges of learning characters? Uh, so there are, I, I think... Um... There are different ways to teach uh, reading and writing Chinese characters. Oh, for my class, I know there are some uh, teachers out there, they are just uh, teaching students to type. They are not uh, really requiring students to learn how to write characters uh, in the right uh, stroke order by hand. So I'm still doing the tra uh, traditional way. Um, so I, I still require students um, to write, uh, to to learn how to read and write uh, the um, how to say the stroke orders and how to the configurations of Chinese characters. So um, I for of course I want to make the material more interactive. So sometimes uh, for the first probably three units or three uh, uh, modules, it will be a combination of uh, pinyin and Chinese characters. Uh, if they have learned the characters, then they need to be able to uh, read, recall, and uh, write the character. Uh, so that's one way to control how much um, uh, characters they can read by what time to um, really introduce speaking and listening at the uh, beginning and delay the character instruction. So that's one of the uh, things that I did. Uh, another one is uh, when students are writing Chinese characters, for example, uh, a uh, Chinese character for, um, for xin, face, or for uh, uh, letter. So uh, I still ask them to go to uh, pick a app, maybe it's Playco, Yellow Bridge, to learn the right uh, stroke order. And in class, uh, for a period of time, maybe two or three minutes, to show each other the key characters if they can write in class to their uh, classmates the, in the uh, correct stroke order. So um, the, the peers will be able to check on each other's um, uh, accuracy in uh, writing the Chinese character. Uh, when it comes to the intermediate level, uh, once students have some uh, uh, character knowledge, then I uh, introduce Chairman Bao. Uh, Chairman Bao has the audio part and the, the reading part, and then there is comprehension text. So from intermediate level to advanced level, students uh, start to use Chairman Bao to select uh, a few uh, articles they are interested in, and at least they can read one uh, reading uh, every week. Uh, when students are going to the um, intermediate class, I use a, a lot of authentic materials to enrich the class. So it's a time consuming for us, uh, for teachers to annotate all the readings. So um, I use another app called the Pandu Reader to help me translate or to help me to um, provide annotations of the, the opinion, the simplified and traditional and the, the English um, or the English meaning of each uh, characters. So I use these apps to help students uh, learn to read. But uh, going back to um, what uh, Terry mentioned earlier, uh, students need authentic materials. They need the level appropriate reading materials to maintain their interest. So I think that's the that's the key. How how teachers use the technology to facilitate, to support students uh, in that type of learning. Fantastic. And we did just have, uh, thank you, Jim, for posting those resources that you'd mentioned. For those of you who might want to bookmark that and head out to those, absolutely. I would definitely recommend doing so. Fantastic. Thank you. And uh, passing this next, the same question, but we'll pass to, uh, we'll pass to Wang Laoshi. And the question again was, how do you help students learn characters? Um, as you all know, uh, my programs are uh, completely online, so um, I use a lot of tools, uh, including websites, a, a variety of different apps, and uh, videos from social media, et cetera, to enrich students' uh, learning, um, uh, you know, characters um, that um, um, 
So the, the several tools I use, I, I find pretty useful. One is called yellowbridge.com. And Jim has posted that to the chat box. <clears throat> so uh, when you go to that website, you will see a function called the animated stroke order rules. Um, I would let students to, um, um, to kind of study. All my classes are hybrid. So the students have to study the, you know, the characters on their own before they come to a class and to do any homework. Um, so they can copy and paste the unknown character into that box uh, on that website. And it's going to show the stroke order of each character. So they can, you know, basically have a, like a, a teacher showing them how to write, but it really uh, kind of reduces my time, you know, to teach each individual student. Um, uh, how to write this character, that character, you know, et cetera. And if they still have questions, they can bring their questions to our online discussion. So um, that's how I use the yellow bridge. And I find the animated stroke order rules, um, the animated videos are pretty useful for students to study on their own at home. Uh, another app that's very useful is called Pleco, and you can download it on your phone. And if you have a touch screen phone, which is very handy, um, and this one particular app, I think uh, when students go study abroad, they find it's the most useful as they can walk in the street and, uh, you know, kind of unknown area to them and it's totally new and they see a lot of new things that they have never, you know, really thought about in class. Um, they see this character, they don't have no clue um, and they don't have a dictionary with them. They can pull out Placo and then you can handwrite on their touch screen and it's going to show them all the possible combinations and they can look, okay, it's not this one, this one, it's this one, and uh, this is the pronunciation, this is the meaning of it, and it even give you some sample sentences. So Placo helps students to learn, and especially for those travelers and the study abroad, you know, kind of students. Um, so um, I kind of uh, introduced that at the very beginning uh, uh, of, you know, the students in the language, enrolled in our uh, language certificate program. Um, so the, by the time they really try to uh, adapt the language into their working, you know, face, they don't feel, uh, a, you know, quite new. Um, so I think already get used to, uh, to it and they know how to use it and they don't get just panicked, right, on site. Um, other, you know, uh, tools that are resources I use, YouTube is a very good resources, but it has a really a large amount of all kinds of sorts of videos. So I usually um, would have watched a lot of those and select, you know, particular videos I think is a very suitable to my lesson and embedded that. And there are many different ways that you can filter the, you know, the uh, commercials advertisement when you embed into the CMS system. Uh, and there's two videos to show you how to do that on YouTube as well. But YouTube is a really good resource to get a free kind of stuff for students and they can just watch on their phone. Um, there are some um, tools that teachers developed. Uh, I remember there's a very useful tool um, developed by uh, the professor at uh, UC uh, Berkeley. Um, and uh, I, I don't think it's still uh, open to public though. I don't know why, but uh, sometimes uh, those tools can be very useful, but they may only at a you know, certain time it be open to public or to certain school districts. Um, uh, also for, I'm also in charge of the Chinese Language Teacher Association Technology Group. Um, so for our group, we run the online workshops. And so every, uh, you know, um, a few months we would invite a calligrapher um, to come to uh, conduct a demonstration to our members. So some of the events were open to students um, so that the teacher members can um, invite their student to participate. I find that quite useful um, as some students will see someone more superior and um, to demonstrate how to, you know, how to do like a pen brush and, you know, calligraphy brush and to teach them, you know, the skills. Um, which they couldn't really, uh, you know, do that uh, or even have, you know, someone um, to uh, give them a one-on-one -on -one instruction, even in the classroom. So we make those online workshops and to help students, uh, especially those that are out of state and they are, um, you know, ha have, you know, away from campus to learn how to write. So those are the main kind of uh, um, method I use to teach students characters online.
Excellent. Those are a lot of great ideas, especially bridging that gap when the students aren't physically on campus. They're entirely relying on the internet for the course. Thank you. And again, passing the same question, we will go to Jin Laoshi. And once again, the question was, how do you help students learn characters? Uh, thank you. And I'm so glad to hear what Wang Laoshi just mentioned. I still need my students to practice handwrite characters, especially for lower level. So uh, level one, two, they, they do a lot of handwriting. But, you know, when we move up, uh, my AP students, they, they primarily type type their work. So when we started the, uh, the Zoom year, uh, this is what I did. Number one, I think I uh, took a look at my uh, all the characters I used to teach in a school year. And I filtered those characters and put them into two categories, core vocab and basic vocab. Because I think I knew I wouldn't be able to cover as much as what I used to do in a physical classroom. And number one, <laughs> you know, students had to come to school uh, at the beginning of the school year to pick up their, you know, textbooks, you know. So I told school, besides the textbooks we need for, for level one and level two students, please give each student a little whiteboard and a marker. And, and apparently that was, I think, was a very good decision because it really helped me a lot. And uh, number three is I spent the summer before school started um, to go through all those core vocabs and actually work with other teachers in my school district teaching the same level. We just went to websites and download the animated stroke order for each core vocab words. And I think the web, uh, our situation is a little different because in my school district, we have to teach both simplified and traditional. Students choose which one they want to learn, but as teachers, we have to provide both. It was so much time was spent you know, in front of the computer, trying to find stroke order for both simplified and traditional. And uh, we tried different websites, uh, such as uh, Purple Culture and uh, Arch, A-R-C-H, Arch. But eventually we decided to go with a website called Han Zi Pi, H-A-N-Z-I-P-I, because that website has both simplified and traditional. It's, you know, it's like one, and it's free. <laughs> because I, I think uh, purple culture, you have to pay. Or, but that really also saved us a lot of time. When we assign new uh, characters to the students, we always attached those animated files so they could learn by themselves. And I just mentioned the little whiteboard. So that for my Chinese one, it was a routine activity. Like, Get your little whiteboard. I said in Chinese, Xiao Bai Ban, Ma Ke Bi. And, you know, write this character and put it in front of your camera. Show me. And I could give timely feedback. Like, you missed one stroke. You know, or you need to add a little dot here. Um, and that was one thing we did for character learning. And another uh, approach was to use uh, uh, technology tools. The one we used the most, uh, the ones we used the most were uh, Nearpod and Jamboard. Actually, I think any uh, app with a drawing function can serve the purpose. And, you know, it just, I asked them to, to write characters, but using as a like drawing, you, you know what I'm saying? Like to draw a picture, but they actually do uh, characters. Um, and of course, students' feedback is using a computer mouse to draw characters is not very, you know, easy, it's not easy to do. So they actually like the little whiteboard better. You know, like, can we do the little whiteboard instead of the, uh, using the app? But for me, Using an app, I can actually save their work. And I can, you know, uh, later on take a look and maybe I can give feedback uh, in a later time. As a class, I think a lot of you missed this character. Let's, you know, reteach this, relearn this. So, you know, that's uh, what I think I 
did for the character learning during the Zoom year. I love the story about the little whiteboard. It just goes to show that even though we have all this technology, sometimes it's the simple things that work the best and the students have the most fun with it. I love it. Thank you. And now, uh, Walt Slavshi, if I could please get your insight and same question, how do you help your students learn characters? Well, I'm going to start by telling you a short story. And one day, some years ago, back when before COVID, when we could travel and not worry about anything, I stood in front of the Taipei train station. And I stood there for a couple of hours with a clipboard, along with all the people selling insurance and all these other things. And because I was a cute foreigner, I could get people to answer my survey. It was really easy. My survey was, what do you write by hand? Okay. And when all of the dust cleared, there were five things that people wrote by hand. Shopping lists, filling out forms, taking phone messages, writing greeting cards, and if you were a student, writing school assignments. But what's missing from that list? Any kind of extensive writing as an adult in the target culture. So I thought about that and I said, you know, why am I demand or why would I want to demand that all of my students memorize characters to write from hand by memory when most of them will never be called upon to do that in the real world. So the short answer to how do I teach characters is I don't. And that's, I know, I know you're, I'm lucky this is virtual because you're all getting ready to throw things. It's, it's happened in workshops. They're all, they start rumbling in the back row, you know. But think about this. What, what we do is we do very extensive reading. So in lesson one, these kids have already read seven, 8,000 characters worth of running text that's only going to be about 30 unique characters. Okay, it's not like they're learning 150. It's a very small body of characters repeated many, many times in unpredictable contexts because it's in running text, not on flashcards. So while they're doing that, they're also getting reinforcement of syntax, reinforcement of decoding, all these things. But the reason I say that is when we do writing, or at least when I do writing, I'm teaching it using text referenced writing. So when I have them write by hand in class, I say, okay, uh, you know, write me a story based on this picture. And I put some picture up on the overhead or on the thing, whatever it is. And if they're gonna write by hand, I say, if you forget how to write a character, look in your text, find it in your text. And at first when we started developing this, we, we did six years of this at University of Hawaii Star Talk. And we thought, they'll just copy sentences from the story that they have, but they didn't. It was very surprising in a way. And so by doing that, we found that they were able to write characters that were indistinguishable being read by native speakers from students who had had instruction in stroke order and had copied and copied like I did in college. I mean, I've got papers and papers full of my handwriting from college. And it's pretty, I liked it, but it, you know, I can't remember those characters now. T.B. Wong, Zhu, that's my middle name. You know, so I don't teach. I just make sure they get plenty, plenty, plenty of reading and then that they go back. And then of course we use compositional writing at, to, as our friend in helping to reinforce characters in that my students are taught to edit each other. They're taught how to be a good peer editor. I, just really consciously train them. How do I want you to help your partner read his own writing back? What kind of feedback can you give him? So they read their own writing back out loud. And very often, because they've had all this written input, they'll stop in the middle of a sentence and say, that doesn't look right. That doesn't sound right. And they'll correct themselves. Now, it's not 100%, but after 15 days of this, we had students, 15 hours rather, we had students who were able to write between 120 and 190 characters of running text with fewer than two errors. And an error was defined as, I was a little loose on characters. I said, if you missed like one stroke, but I could definitely make out what it was. Okay, you're just novices, fair enough. But also any mistake in syntax, any mistake in word order, placement, word choice, anything. So I was surprised. The results were not perfect. So what I would like to know now is, how much 
traditional type of, of mnemonics or, or rote copying, so to speak, should we add in to hit the sweet spot? Because there's a sweet spot there somewhere that would give us the best return. And I don't know what that is, but someday we'll find out. That's my answer to everything. I don't know, but we'll find out. <laughs> but I've been I very- I couldn't agree more. Character. There is indeed character. that sweet spot somewhere. And I love mm -hmm. the idea about thinking about it. Well, we'll find out. We'll keep doing the research and do things on our end to make that happen. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. Appreciate it.